When your year starts with like, okay, we're on lockdown because of a deadly virus, and now one of my closest friends is having a mental breakdown in a way that reminds me of my mom. And he would just scream like, turn the lights off, I can't see, it's really bright. I found him sleeping on the sidewalk, just shirtless and whatnot. And this is the first week of this shit going down. It was like, okay, I'm in hell, baby. And if I had dollars. I'm Tolliver. I'm an artist living in Los Angeles in Boyle Heights. I be singing, I write for different publications. If you're in LA, you've probably seen me walking around somewhere, just wandering. I'm 6'5", and I'm always like dressed real bright. You're very noticeable. So, I knew I wanted to do music. I was like a piano player in my dad's church. My dad was a Baptist pastor, and my mom was like the lead soprano. And I'm like mama's boy, which is like the story of like so many like queer boys. You know, it's just like I love my mom. I wanted to be like her, so I started singing, and um, I did like musicals and stuff like that. I remember when I was a kid, I had Gallery 37. It was like the one place I could go hang out because I had like a troubled childhood. I could go hang out there and we would like sing opera. It was like a very formative experience. <laughs> Chicago, where I grew up, I, it was really scary for me because I grew up in a neighborhood, Roseland, in between two gangs. The block behind me was BD's, the block in front of me was GD's. I always had good grades because I never went outside. I was like scared as hell because Ballhead shot at us, <laughs> you know, like, I hated it. Uh. We in the hotel lobby, high as a kite, hiding in SpaceX, uh. we never gonna land, baby. Yeah, my dad died when I was 11, and he was really, really, really good to me and really sweet. My mom was gone a lot because she was suffering from, like, mental health issues. So he was, like, raising us by himself for a, a lot of the time that he was alive. My dad said, you know, homophobic things when I was a kid, you know? <laughs> but because I know how much he loved me, I hoped that he would be, like, down. I feel like so much of my music is almost trying to, like, talk to him and try to, like, reconcile this, like, Baptist stuff, but all the love I have for it and all the love I have for him with who I am. And almost trying to like merge the two of them. My mom, Rita, she's been schizophrenic since I was a kid. She's been in homes basically. And now because of COVID, I can't visit. I feel like she's not like coming back mentally. She sings me songs to help me in my career because she thinks I'm like a famous musician. And she's like, I saw you on TV today. I have all these freaking recordings on my phone. Do you remember John Lerenta? Strawberry Martin. Now tell me if you feel this. I lived in Minneapolis for a little bit of time and the shit that happened to George Floyd, I used to go to that place that called the cops on him all the time. It is like the most ratchet place on earth. So I was shocked that they called the police. I was really, really scared. I was not feeling life, really. And it's really strange because it feels like a complete 180, right? Because I feel strangely optimistic. Like I'm nervous about a lot of stuff, but I'm super optimistic because of stuff like going to volunteer at Boyle Heights Arts Conservatory. Meeting all these people who are like 18, 16 who just want to be activists out in the streets for Black Lives Matter protests and stuff like that. You can feel a, a kind of gap in yourself sometimes. Like you're walking around, you can feel there's something not there. And a lot of times when I go volunteering wherever, you can feel it fill up. It definitely like reconnected me to optimism. I started writing for LA Taco, which is like an activist site. And I wrote a story for them about a black business owner who had been looted downtown. People were looting businesses, but black businesses are supposed to be sort of untouched, right? Oh, oh, I'm not changing, not today. People from all over the world reached out to him to like show support. I was getting messages from people in Paris who were like, hey, I read your story. I don't have a lot of money, but if there's something I can give you to, to help you get back on your feet. So that blew my mind a little bit. That in a lot of ways it was kind of a turning point too because it reminded me again that like, oh, there are dope people out there. 
Thank you. Thank you.